another day, another problem to solve here at Merch Studio. But again, this is another good problem because, wait, let me show you flips. Let me show you that big one, that big printer that we have. I gave up on that for now. For now, it's right here, right by the dining table. Say hi, guys. So much energy. Woo! We're, we're, we're parking that for now, but I, I think I know what to do with it. But as you saw in the last video, we got a replacement printer for it. It's a smaller one. It's a two head. So from DTF Superstore. But what we did right now with it, and I should have recorded that, but we kind of took it apart. All the covers, well, most of the covers, we took it apart because we wanted to check the ink line before anything else. And this is what the ink line looks like. It looks a little weird to me still because but from what I can see, this is your uh, forward line, this is your return line. So when you circulate it, it just goes around there. This right here, this is the line that goes straight to your white print head. So number one, there's no sub tanks. Number two, that uh, one light splits into four here. So I already know that we're probably gonna have a little bit of trouble with this because I don't even see that, but the white ink line, the tubes already have folds. But you know, we've been printing till midnight, one in the morning sometimes, sometimes until 11 for the past couple of weeks because we want to make sure that your orders are going out as fast as possible. So we're gonna see if we can get this to work. And we're gonna add some ink in there and priming and all that good stuff. And we'll see you in a bit. Let's make t-shirts. So while Anne is loading up the ink, we're gonna go to DTF University for a little bit. Let me show you. DTF University is DTF Superstores, kinda like the tutorial portal where you can learn everything that you need to learn. And I'm not sure if they're selling these courses, but they're free when you buy a printer from them. Uh, so on top of the support that you can get through email and calls and, and text and all that stuff, you also have this with them. So that's what's great about DTF Superstore is, you know, they got you covered. So we've already primed the color lines, but we're going to prime the white ink lines, which basically just means that we're going to load the white ink, get them into the dampers before we start doing the whole load ink process so that we can have the ink in there and the process of fully ink. So to do that, we're going to need this right here. You can get one that's smaller and one of these little micro pipette tip. So my gear, put that at the end, at so. And then you grab a damper. So I'm just gonna take that off carefully. I'm gonna push this in. Be careful that you don't uh, damage that rubber there. I'm gonna put it in, have it angled up like this, have it angled up, and then just show this one here and just pull. Hopefully, see the white thing come through. There you see that. So we're gonna keep on pulling down until we fill in this area and there's no bubbles in there. And I'm keeping myself angled. You see how we have bubbles there? We're trying to pull that out. Although we might not be able to get all of it. All right, that should be good. I'm gonna flip it over and put it back in. Go to the next one. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other ones. I'm gonna show you that again. All right, should be good. We are done priming that. So next thing that we're going to do, see that we already have CM1K and the white. Next thing that we're going to do is go and get up Python Fear and then we are going to calibrate and do some alignments. We're going to do some alignments, calibrate, and finally we're going to adjust the color so that we can get it just like that one. So you're going to need to uh, put two cables in. One's the power cord here, goes in there, and the other one's the ethernet cord here that goes into your computer. But this one here, let me show you something. When you get your printer, you're gonna have this outlet and it looks like this. And this is a, it's a pretty amp, two pretty bolt outlet with a, I think this cap brawl cable. Well, so make sure that you have an outlet that's uh, made for this. Uh, we had ours mount uh, by an electrician just to, get, uh, just to stay safe. But I know I know people who use uh, converters all the time and that should be that should be okay if you're gonna get these printers make sure they follow your supplier and make sure that you have the right power and all that 
Okay, so we've got it hooked up to Friend EXT. We're currently feeding the print hand and we're doing a few nozzle checks, but that's not on top. That's in the bottom. The, there's some uh, oil at the bottom. The was in rollway, in fact. That was from the motor that's uh, printing this roller right here. This metal bar. So there seems to be oil there. But yeah, it's just going to get self sorted out. We're going to do a pen and test. Baseline stop right now. Colors to be solid. Only if you can see that, you probably can't because we have our LED disconnected because we're in a little bit soft here. But the color's on point, white's on point. Uh, we're going to be with some uh, vertigo check valve. On the vertical check, it's a little bit crooked. It's a little bit see that. So it's a little bit crooked. Not that much. I think we can deal with that for now. And this was a little bit more off. So we're probably going to, and you see that, we're probably going to need to work on that right there. What we're going to do is we're going to remove these four screws and make these four screws on the mount and then adjust this screw here. I'm going to look at the light, but we'll give it the same color. But these four screws, three, and then there's another one right here. Greater you them and we're gonna adjust this. Right now, when you look at the vertical check, it's kinda not lined up like that. So what we need to do is move this over this way so that they're mined up. And the way we do that is by turning this butter. And when you turn it to the left, when your upper line is bulging on the, bulging on the left, it's the treated on the left, then you turn this to the left to bring it back to the center. And when it's facility to the right, you turn that to the right to get it back at the center. But it's protruding to the left, so we're going to turn that thing one full turn to the, to the left. And it might not be perfect the first time, and we might need to clean this a couple of times. So, you know, I'll just put the this thing back. Yeah, main issue now is just a little bit of graininess and dithering with, I don't know if you can see that, to see our mom boots. So, it's still graining. Even though everything's lined up. Those two things we need to fix. Number one, we have to calibrate the color steer to get it the same as this. I uh, will do that with the NYX plugin. We use the NYX Factor Wasometer and we'll work on that tomorrow because it's not 5 p.m. and I need to take a break before we ship today's orders. There you go, all of the cables secured. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to be now is color calibrate so that this printer will have the same color output as this printer right there. To do that, we're gonna need this next mini two, which is a spectro pathometer. And we're gonna plug that into the computer USD and calibrate using CAD link. So I wanna turn on a CAD link here. Now, the only thing here that you have to understand is that when you buy Catholic, it's not going to have the next plugin. So you won't automatically be able to use this device uh, and you'll have to uh, buy the next plugin so that they'll be able to communicate with each other. All right, it is the next day. We got some of the color matching sorted out. If you wanna know how to use the NYX, there's a tutorial online. Just look for NYX color matching CAD link. And one of those things is gonna send me to the video tutorial on how to do it. It's not much of a difference. Like if I put in side by side, I'll meet a month. This is a little bit darker and more vibrant than this. So we're gonna adjust that a little bit more because, you know, the kites are used to this sort of kite. So that's, you know, that's one of the challenges with having two printers is you have to color match them. And we're getting uh, a different software to get them while printing Pantones. But for now, you know, we gotta do what we gotta do and we gotta get uh, things working. Now we also did a few test presses on the shirt. And what we're looking for is color and transparency. We're trying to avoid the shirt color coming out, especially on a black shirt. So this one was on the odd lead from before. This one is on the Oric, or on the Mongoose rather. I think it's a little bit off-white, right? And the car, we just did, it's this one right here. And this is what that looks like. Looks pretty solid. There's still a little bit of breathing that's still in us, so we gotta pitch that. And there's some white peeking out as well. So we gotta pick up the choke on that registration top point, or we're just gonna choke it back a little bit. But yeah, that's what it looks like. Now this test was on bold heel because that's what we loaded up here yesterday. 
but add just a shade of the hot peel. We're gonna do some hot peel testing as well. And we're gonna compare the colors. We're gonna press the oddly prints here. Is this spot yo oddly? The way you're gonna press one of these on a different shirt. And we're gonna press one of the auric, uh, I keep saying orange because the orange, the old one. Uh, this was also an orange, but this is an orange too bad. We're done fitting on the hot peel. Next thing we're gonna do is do some test presses with it. See if it works as well with a hot peel as it does with a cold peel. Getting it on, getting it on. I just went up the stairs and I'm huffing and puffing. I need to start working out again. We're just waiting for it to finish. Again, this is the mongoose. Hey, look out for you. Go ahead. Come on. Let's do the post press. What do you think? Wait. We're so different from each other. I was not even sure. All right, now we're gonna do the odd leaf. <laughs> now we're just gonna do a post press and then we're gonna compare the two images the one on the left is the mongoose the one on the right is the oddly you can see yeah the oddly is a little bit lighter so we have to lighten this a little bit registration still off right so when we get closer you see so you still see some light peeking out so we gotta dust that the oddly doesn't have it this one does, so we're gonna bring the intensity down a little bit and adjust the white. So those are the two adjustments that we need to do. Move the white in, choke it a little bit more, and bring the intensity down to make the colors the same. This is a few minor adjustments and we're good to go. No more midnights. No more work until 1 a.m. So that video was taken in May when this printer arrived. If you watched our previous uh, video, that was how we got this in here. And this is how the prints look like now. So this is your Mongoose 2, that's the new painter. This is one of the designs that we have for our online store. Since that, as you can see in there, we have pretty much gotten rid of the deathering of the greeniness. There's still a little bit of that, but there's under the microscope, you will see that. So if you look at the back, registration is on point. Your front, you do not see any of the white peeking out. Now, we didn't get all of that perfect after that second day. You saw it took us a couple more weeks to get it printing the way we wanted it to. You know, it was a lot of printing and calibrating, printing and calibrating that we had to do. But that's where we are now, and we're pretty happy with it. Update in terms of printing. I think since we got that running, we probably did two or three days burning the midnight oil printing. But for the most part, we get done at 5 or 6 p.m. At the latest 7 p.m. For, to, for today's orders that need to get out today. If we have those, we put it until about 7. Because the UPS trucks that bring the UPS next day air packages leave their uh, distribution center at 741. So if we stop printing at 7, we are able to hear it, pack it up, and get it there before that UPS next day air truck drives out. So that's that little misadventure with that printer. And just... Uh, Pardon all the shenanigans that we have over there because we are getting ready for another anime convention. More on that. But some of you in the comment section were asking which printer this was. Some of you thought that the oddly gave up on us. The oddly still going strong. It's a workhorse. This one is the forehead printer, the Auric that gave out on us. Well, it didn't give out on us, but there were some, I think, some flaws that need to be fixed with it. I'm pretty sure we can fix it. I'm still pretty happy because we are getting things done and shipped out real quickly. So I'm pretty stoked. Hope you learned something from that. We'll see you next time and let's make t-shirts.